Gabby here, and I'm thrilled to be talking about containers. There's a lot of hype in this space, but not a lot of clear solutions. And when it comes to container management, Portainer might be the solution for you. They've got a brand new product coming out, and we're going to tell you about Portainer Business with Neil Creswell, their CEO. But before I introduce him, you should know that they've got 450,000 users and 150,000 deployments already in action. Neil, how's it going this morning? Hey, Sarah, it's going amazing today. I can imagine this is a big day in the office. Lots of excitement. Absolutely. Hard work, lots of excitement. Why did you start Portainer? What, what's the problem you're solving and the vision behind all this work and exciting announcement today? So the problem we're, we're trying to solve with Portainer is how to make container management uh, accessible to everybody. So the container technology, whether it be Docker or Kubernetes, it is an amazing groundbreaking technology, but it is so challenging to use. And the actual cost to enter this technology is phenomenal. You have to go and hire a bunch of really smart people and smart people are expensive. You have to invest in a whole bunch of, of really complicated tooling. And really that just, just the barriers to entry are massive. And our goal right from day one has been, how do we make this technology available to everybody without the huge learning curve and financial barriers to entry? Fantastic, Neil. Let's dive in a little bit. You talk a lot about humanizing containers, and there's some recent data from CNCF that says the complexity is the biggest challenge and barrier for teams looking to deploy and use containers. Yeah, so, so containers themselves are actually relatively straightforward. What, what they do and how they work is relatively straightforward. But when it comes to orchestrating their use in a production environment, so when you, when you have multiple containers working together uh, across multiple data centers or, or scaled multiple front-end, back-end environments, complexity elevates dramatically. And in order to, to use these underlying technologies, without Portainer that is, you have to know some very, very complicated languages. You need to know how to write things called YAML. You need to know how to write manifest files. You need, you need to know very complicated command lines. And all of these things, is, it's very, very challenging. They're very, very error prone. This technology was not written or not created for humans to interface with. It really is a machine language API that you are engaging with. So humans don't necessarily engage with machines very well. Humans engage with humans very well, but not machines. And so that's, that's, kind, of, that, yeah. that's kind of the problem we're trying to solve is, is how how do, we, how do we provide a system that makes it easier for humans to engage with and then our system engages with the machine? So let's dig in just a little deeper there because I love this. How does Portainer solve the challenge of the complexity of container management? Well, so what we've, what we've done inside the application, we have built a whole bunch of rules so that Portainer knows what can and can't be done with the underlying infrastructure. You, you as a user don't need to know, well, if I deploy an application with persistence, I can't have multiple replicas sharing the same underlying storage unless that's allowed. We, we basically have all these rules built into the application that says, if this, then that. So it just make, it makes it way easier for users to engage with. It removes a lot of risk and burden of understanding. You can just engage with the application and we take care of all of the complexity. It sounds like you've created an intuitive interface for one of the biggest challenges facing developers and teams right now trying to deploy this technology, and that's fantastic. In fact, CNCF says that 41% of teams list complexity as their greatest complaint, and 32% of them list security as their greatest complaint or challenge. Portainer Business solves both, right? Absolutely. So, you know, Portainer Business, and we've obviously moved into the, the Portainer Business element here, but Portainer Business specifically is targeted around security and compliance. So, how, how do you give greater insight to the CIO and CISO around how people are engaging with and, and leveraging the container platform? So, you know, the, the general Portainer version, it's obviously for everybody, everyone can use it, uh, and it's secure but it doesn't go deep in regards to, to compliance and reporting and all that kind of stuff. So, so yeah, I mean, obviously the, the, the goal for, for Portainer is, as I've said before, to, to make this thing easy and to make it safe and secure. This means that the product is perhaps for a different audience 
as well. I know that you're a very community first CEO and we've seen that throughout Pertainer's product development and over the last few years, you designed with someone special in mind for Portainer Business, and this is a persona and a person on a team that you have a very intimate knowledge of. Tell us more. Yeah, well, obviously, my, my background is actually CTO and CIO. So I, I have an intimate knowledge of what I expect an application to have to put it inside my organization en masse. So having an application over here to one side that is just used by, by one small team to do something relatively bespoke, yeah, I've got a very high tolerance for that one over here. But as a CIO and as my right hand CISO really cares about, once this thing goes wide in my organization, how can I ensure this thing is safe, secure, that there's no back doors, that there's no, there's no open CVEs, that the thing can be trusted and relied upon. And that is what I built into Portainer Business. Yeah, for myself as a CIO, what would I expect? I'd expect these capabilities, these characteristics of the application. The CE version doesn't have that because it was never designed for that goal in mind. The business edition specifically for that. And you would know exactly what that is. I can imagine when you yourself are a core user, you're a tough user to please. So those who oh, yeah. use Portainer <laughs> Business will probably be pleasantly surprised. Talk about being your own worst critic. I, I enjoy that. So for our existing community, what, what can they expect in comparison to Portainer CE, our community edition, and uh, PB, Portainer Business? Give us a little breakdown. So Portainer Community is designed for everybody to use, right? We, we, don't, we don't try and lock it down to a particular use case. It's not designed for a certain audience. It's a, a general purpose application that can be used by anybody. So whether it's a home user, uh, someone who is, is experimenting in a, in a home lab for them to take to work, a, a developer at work or an executive who, who wants to, to have this tool as a way to manage everything. Portainer CE does that and it does that very, very well. That's why we've had such great adoption. Portainer Business is for a very specific use case where it is deployed en masse inside a large enterprise or, or a, a standard commercial use case, but where, where, where you must have that, that further degree of security and compliance and also a uh, better control, better granularity, better role-based access, better uh, you know, uh, fine tuning of, of resource allocation. So it's a specific use case. Neil, can you talk us through some of the features of Portainer Business that you're most excited about? One of the biggest features is uh, role-based access control. Now we've had this RBAC feature for Docker for quite some time now, but in Portainer Business, we've extended that to include Kubernetes as well. So now we've got really fine-grained access control right across the spectrum, whether, whether you're a Docker standalone user, Docker Swarm, and now Kubernetes. What it, whatever you're using, we can, we can actually give you very detailed um, breakdown of roles based on the user type. So it depends if they're a administrator, if they're a help desk, if they're a user, a power user, a read-only user. We've got a role for your, your particular audience inside your organization. One of the other big features uh, is around um, registry management. So having a registry is key to containers. You can't have a container platform without a registry and being able to manage your images in that registry is key. If you're just blindly pushing and pulling to a registry, eventually you run out of space and the thing will die. So our registry management lets you engage with that remote registry and see and delete and change and just manage it from within Portainer. Uh, the, the other other key feature is external authentication. So in Portainer CE, we let you connect to LDAP and OAuth, but it's a very technical configuration. Whereas inside our business edition, this is all click to configure. So I say I want to use external authentication. I want to use Azure AD. Uh, three three questions. It's configured, and your users are logging in with their familiar Azure AD login credentials. So very very nice. Uh, in Kubernetes specifically, we've provided the ability to, to further refine restrictions around namespaces, what we call resource pools. So who can, who can use which uh, resource pool and what quota can they be assigned? So CPU and memory, of course, but load balances, storage allocation as well. We can also control who has access to the default resource pool as well. So just a lot of security, a lot of, lot of, uh, of better fine-grained control and just further depth managing registries. How do people learn more about this right now? What should they do? So they can go to our new and improved website, portainer.io. 
uh, there is a, a, a great amount of information on there. Uh, the other thing they can do is join our uh, community program. So if you join the, the uh, community program, uh, there is a, a vast array of, of uh, technical documentation in there. Uh, Documentation.portana.io is a great place to start. Uh, we have everything there from the admin guides, the user guides, uh, how-to instructions. Uh, there, there's a lot of content out there. We've really, really focused on self-help uh, to, to help users get going with the product and get the best out of the product. Fantastic. And I, I just got to ask because I'm curious, as a community first as CEO, how have you balanced the needs of your home and smaller community users with the demands and excitement of the business and enterprise audience? So we are actually really excited by our home users. So for us, home users uh, provide two, two really valuable assets for us. They are very, very vocal in what they would like the application to, to do and they're very vocal in how the application should function. Um, that for us is great because it's actually quite difficult to get some very direct feedback out of large enterprises. Quite often they're a bit more reserved and laid back and, and don't, don't want to share, whereas home users are very vocal. So for us, we, we listen very, very closely to our home users. I, I take any kind of negative criticism very personally of the application. So every piece of negative criticism I hear or any piece of any kind of criticism I take and listen and say, right, what are we going to do? How, how can we make the product better? based off this particular piece of information. So for us, home users, gold, because they, they help us form and improve the UI UX of the application. So hopefully that puts our community at ease that loves using you at home. There will always be a free version of Portainer, correct, Neil? There will always be a free version of Portainer. There is no reason for us to change that. Uh, again, what, what we're saying is we want Portainer to make uh, container management available to the masses, and we do that through our uh, CE version. So CE version available for everybody. 95% of our user base will use that. The others will use the specific business edition. Absolutely, all day, every day. Fantastic, Neil. Well, congratulations to you and the entire team on this thrilling launch of Portainer Business. I know I'll be shouting it from the rooftops and sharing it with all of my friends trying to take on the crazy challenge of container management. I appreciate your time today, your insights as always. And just in case some folks are just dying to say hello to you, where should they reach out on the internet? Uh, they can get me on Twitter or they can even email me directly. Look at that, old fashioned email. We love a good, we love a good transparent CEO. We'll be sure and put Neil's contact details as well as where you can find our documentation and further info about Portainer Business in the comments and as well as in the video description here. And most importantly, thank you all for taking the time to join us for this interview today. We sincerely appreciate your attention and your support. Mm -hmm.